Welcome to Spreadsheet Geek. In this lesson, we're going to decide whether to lease or buy a piece of equipment, and we're going to make that decision using the present value and net present value functions. This video was made using Microsoft Excel 2019. Many businesses struggle with the decision to lease or buy a piece of equipment or some expensive item. We're going to take a look at this problem and we're going to do it from a present value perspective. Let's consider a present value example. Let's say I owe you $100. And the agreement that you and I have made is that I will pay you that $100 exactly one year from today. What would you say if I came to you today and I said, how much would you be willing to accept to settle that debt today? You might say something less than $100, for example, $95. What you've just done is discounted that future cash flow and you've discounted it at a rate of 5%. Why 5%? Well, that 5% probably reflects my ability to pay. If you suspected I might have trouble coming up with $100 a year from now, you might be willing to accept an even deeper discount of, say, 10% or just $90 today. This is the actual formula you use to discount a future cash flow over one period. Let's plug in the numbers. In the numerator, we have $100, which is our future cash flow that we're discounting to present value. And in the denominator, we have one plus the periodic interest rate of 5% over a year, and we have one period. Before we go on to Excel, I'm gonna make this scenario a little more complicated. Let's say I owed you $100 a year from now and a second payment of $100 two years from now. How would you discount two future cash flows to present value? Well, here's the formula to do that. You simply add on another fractional component. Here's the formula with the numbers plugged in. Notice we've simply added on a second fraction that's very similar to the first, but uh, the denominator is taken to the second power because it's the second payment two years from now, or two periods. Here's the answer plugged in at $186. So that's a $5 discount on the first $100 payment a year out and about $9 of discount for the second payment a full two years out. If you had a third or a fourth or fifth year payment, you could continue adding fractional components to your formula. Just take them to the next higher power. Let's take a look at how Excel handles the present value function. In this sheet, I've created some simple input cells. Our rate is 5% over one year, our period is one year, and our payment is $100. With our formula off to the right to reference, I've gone ahead in this cell here, uh, simply done it the manual way and plugged in the numbers. Now let's do it the easy way. So in this cell, I'm gonna type equals and then PV for the present value function. The first thing it asks me for is the rate. I'm gonna go ahead and reference my annual rate. N per is the number of periods, one, and the payment I'm going to express as a negative because it represents a cash outflow and the present value function looks at this from a cash outflow perspective. And then you have two factors which are not required, future value and type. 
So I'm not going to talk about those today. And there's our answer. I'm going to go ahead and format that the same way. If you take these out to multiple decimal places, you see they're identical. Moving on to the more complex example, I've gone ahead and plugged in the manual formula entry here for the two payments of $100 over two years. Let's plug in the easy Excel example. <clears throat> Using present value, it's asking me for the rate, the number of periods, and expressed as a negative, I'm going to give it the payment amount. And I come up with exactly the same figure out to many decimal places. The present value function may work just fine for the lease scenario, but for the buy scenario, it's not going to work. We need a present value function where we can have uneven cash inflows and outflows periodically. Luckily, Excel offers another function called net present value. Let's take a look at net present value. You type in NPV, and the first thing it's going to ask you for is the rate. We'll use our 5% again. And this time it's going to want each and every value that you have. So we're going to have two. I'll enter a, a hundred twice. And you'll notice that yields the exact same answer. So net present value can do everything that present value can do and more. So let's look at our lease versus buy scenario. For this scenario, I'm going to lay out a little framework. It, this is going to be a copier machine lease or buy, a typical expenditure for a small business. It's a five-year lease we're considering, so I'm just going to make this five years of ownership under the buy scenario. And at the end of the five years, we will dispose of the machine. Uh, by then, there will be uh, new machines available that are better. So how much is this going to cost us? This new machine runs $5,500. And I've laid this out by the quarter. Uh, that seems to make sense for a five-year scenario. Given my screen space, I didn't want to go by month. Uh, but you could if you want to get more uh, more precise with this. Our sales tax in our area is going to be point, uh, excuse me, eight percent. So I'll take eight percent of the purchase price. Freight is additional. That's going to be six hundred dollars, but we don't pay sales tax on that. We do have a minor setup cost. We got to bring in the IT guy. He'll take probably an hour, and that's fifty bucks worth of his time. He needs to program in everybody's email to the machine and get it running. Service calls, we don't expect any during the first quarter, but starting in the second quarter, we're going to have somebody come in every six months and service the machine, lubricate the wheels and the uh, rollers and so forth so it works well. Repairs, we don't anticipate any repairs in the first two years, but in the fourth quarter, things are going to start breaking if it's like the one we've had before, and we're going to have $500 worth of repairs in the fourth and fifth year, and excuse me, the third and fourth year. In the fifth year, we're going to assume that we just keep it running on uh, Band-Aids until the end when we dispose of it. The residual value is expected to be $1,000, and I'm going to enter that as a negative. We'll sell it on the second-hand market, and that's reasonable for what we think we'll get. Now, the business could have to recognize a gain on the sale of an asset, depending on how they depreciate this asset, but that's probably beyond the scope of this discussion so I'm just going to leave that at $1,000.
So I've totaled up all of my cash inflows and outflows. You can see it's uneven, a lot of lot up front, and uh, we have uneven uh, cash outflows throughout the five years. I'm going to use a discount rate to discount all of these cash flows to present value of five and a half percent, and that's an annual rate. So why five and a half percent? Well, that's the incremental borrowing cost of my business based upon my business's credit rating and ability to borrow. <clears throat> that's an appropriate interest rate to use. It represents our cost of capital right at this point in time. So let's go ahead with the net present value function. I need the rate. And here's an opportunity to go off track. This is an annual rate and I've set this up by quarters. So I need to divide that by four. I need a quarterly interest rate or discount rate. And then uh, with the net present value, it, it assumes uh, equally spaced payments. So all you have to do is put them all in. Close your parent. And under this scenario, the present value of this buy option is $7,429. Now let's look at the lease option. It's a five-year lease plan that we've been offered and the leaseor is willing to do all of the repairs and maintenance on the machine for the entire five years. So there's no repair cost and no maintenance call cost. We just call them and they show up. He is uh, going to charge us, however, a fee of one cent per copy. The copier machine has a little counter on it and those numbers get reported back to the leaseor and they are going to bill us for that expenditure. So the lease payments are $175 and since I did this on a quarterly basis, three months and a quarter, I'm going to multiply that by three. We get $525 a quarter. We're going to fill that across the top. The Copies that we make, uh, we average about 2,000 copies a month. That's about a, a ream of paper has 500 sheets in it. So we go through about one of those a week. So I'll multiply that by three times one cent per sheet. That's going to be about 60 bucks a quarter just in the copy fees. By the way, this is very close to an actual lease that uh, I negotiated. So I'm going to use the same rate. And remember, this is an annual rate. That's our incremental borrowing rate. And since all of these cash outflows are the same, I'm going to go ahead and use the present value function. I'm going to put in my rate and once again, be very careful with the rates. You want your periodic rate and 5.5% is an annual rate. So I'm going to divide that by four. And then I'm going to put in the number of periods, which will be five times four or 20. And then my cash payment, which is one of these. And I forgot to put that in as a uh, negative. So I'll just fix that. And there you have it, $10,169. So now we can compare the present value of our buy option to the present value of our lease option. And this is probably pretty typical. It usually looks cheaper to buy than to lease. But I can say that uh, most businesses lease. The additional $2,600, dollars that it costs over five years is not worth the hassle factor for many businesses. But you can decide 
I hope this lease versus buy scenario has helped you and that you'll be able to lay out your own scenario and make your own decision. Thanks for visiting Spreadsheet Geek.